Would you like to become a valuable asset to your team and provide versatile solutions when needed? If yes, then you definitely want to improve your heading skill, no matter if you want to score and assist more, or you just want to clear the danger way properly. Becoming a heading master is a nice extra skill you can bring to the table and offer solutions. So for all of you that don't know, Heading is a fundamental technical aspect of the game where the ball comes in contact with your forehead in order to score, assist, maintain possession of the ball or defend. Now the first and most important step to master heading as a skill is to nail down the technical elements of a technically fluid and energy efficient header. So make sure you screenshot those bullet points and common mistakes you're seeing on screen right now, study them and then use them. Slow down your technical drills, get a good feel of how your body moves as a whole to generate fluid movement and make progress. Now, once you master the basic technical elements of heading, which should ideally happen at an early age, you can slowly transition from basic to more complex training stimuli. This is done in an attempt to develop the skill of heading in the context of the constantly changing aka chaotic game environment. However, this doesn't mean that all of your drills should be complex. In fact, a vast majority of the training time needs to be invested in sharpening the technical base no matter your age, your playing level and the experience you have. Having said that, let's now go over 5 tips that will help you turn your great heading technique into exceptional heading skills. The first tip I want to touch upon is slowing down your drills. Now all of you that have watched this video know that slowing down any technical drill is vital to gain that kinesthetic awareness, which is basically the feel you develop on how your muscles, joints and tendons interact while your body is moving and performing a certain action. This can be anything, the approach angle you take, the quick glimpse of the target, how you arc your back to create momentum midair, how your neck moves and follows through that will determine the trajectory of the ball and the fluidity and timing of your jump and header overall. Now, this can be done in a handful of ways. For example, you can get a feel of your heading technique before a crossing session by having someone throw the ball at you at a relatively moderate pace and you practicing a weak point of your heading technique, like for example how you rotate your neck sideways while you're in the air to score. It is during those repetitions that you want to solely focus on every little detail of your heading technique. The good thing about it is that it doesn't take too much of your time and energy. A couple of reps or minutes and you're good to go. Practice the technical cues inside your mind, slow down the first reps and slowly transition into more intensive and game realistic work. Next up, I want to talk about the cognitive side of acquiring and mastering a skill. We mentioned that a football game is chaotic and unpredictable in nature. By including certain reactive components in training, we can get the player closer to the demands of the game. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the perception-action coupling principle. Perceive information around you, process it and act upon it with proper timing and quality of action. Although you can't perfectly simulate game conditions with reactionary drills, it is wise to use cognitive components inside your heading drills to make them more skill specific. For example, you can use a cognitive stimulus that will dictate whether you're going to perform a stationary or a jumping header, move to the near or the far post, head the ball towards the right or the left side of the goal, perform a cushion or a clearance header, that cognitive stimulus can be a partner throwing or kicking the ball at you in varying heights, directions and spins, a cognitive training app, simple gestures or even some advanced virtual reality tech that is getting increasingly popular lately. Using a cognitive stimulus is just great as it gets you into the habit of lifting your head up to scan and use visual information that will guide your actions. Play around with such drills and include variety in your training. In talking about variety, if you're performing heading drills from a stationary position all the time, you're most probably limiting yourself. Although this might be a good starting point to get the technical elements of each header nailed down, it most probably isn't the best way to achieve skill mastery. You see, including other training stimuli, like cognitive ones, that make the drills more game realistic can help you with that. Another way to do that though is by combining off the ball movements with heading. Just think of yourself in game. The vast majority of headers you perform aren't stationary and usually require some sort of off the ball movement to position yourself effectively and achieve the perfect timing. The thing you can do is analyze your game and see what moves you're usually performing before going in for a header. Do you mark yourself off from an opponent in a specific way? Are you backpedaling to position yourself correctly? Are you utilizing reverse crunts to create space for yourself? Find what moves you're most commonly using and couple them with heading drills. An absolute game changer when it comes to finding your rhythm, timing and positioning. Talking about game realism though, we couldn't leave pressure out of the discussion. 
just performing headers without any external pressure is a good starting point. Having said that, adding physical pressure from an opponent later in that session is a great way to stress the skill aspects of heading because, as we mentioned, technical skill requires you to maintain or regain your balance in the unstable environment of the game. By using opponents to apply pressure to you, you further increase the difficulty of the drill and make it more game specific. So please try your best to either find a partner and go in for heading duels or just someone who's gonna jump with you and try to put you off balance midair. Nothing special, just another game realistic component. And to add to that, I also want you to start being aware of the target of your header. And no, I am not just talking about attacking headers here. Defensive headers should also have a target every single time and clearance headers should be a last resort in case of emergency. Awareness of your target is more important than you think. It is also much simpler than you think. A split second view of your teammate being open for a cushion header or the goalkeeper's positioning triggers signals to your nervous system that heavily dictate and guide your actions and their success. Practice that quick look at the target, your teammate or the space you have in front of you at training so that it can happen subconsciously when it is game time. You won't be able to pull this look off with every single header you get into, but the habit of scanning before heading, which is key to increasing your heading success rate, will become automatic. Now if you truly want to take your heading skill to the next level, you also need to watch these two videos next.